Hey guys, how's it going? Thad here with Iowa Budget RC, and I've got a cool project. As you can see, I've got three Blackfoot sitting here in front of me. So this here in the middle is a standard Blackfoot that uh, this one's actually a vintage one. It's uh, from 1987 that uh, I restored uh, last year sometime on my channel. And then uh, this here is my QD Blackfoot. And I never expected to see another one of these ever at all. And um, recently I had a viewer reach out to me and say, hey, I saw you've uh, done some work to some QDs being my midnight pumpkin here that I put modern electronics in and this one actually has the front end broken because the plastics can be kind of brittle so I've got a new front end piece for it right there but anyway he reached out to me and said hey would you be interested in doing a uh, conversion to my black foot which is this one and then he's got another one that's completely stock and it might be the uh the clod buster version um but uh, I said heck yeah um I like doing these kind of things, and uh, so I thought it would make some good video content, and so did he, and uh, so it's going to be a fun one to go through. Um, now, a keen eye will notice, okay, the Blackfoot's always been a Ford, right? So, uh, 1980 F-150 Ranger style body. These, the QDs, are square body Chevys, and uh, why they did that, I don't know but uh, that's what Tamiya decided to do with these. Um, Radio Shack also made their versions of these QD trucks with basically the same type of chassis. The rear end is two speed also, like on the standard QDs, but uh, these are just a shade different as far as like the internal gearing and stuff goes. But this is one of the series we've got the whole series of these uh but this is the tormentor and uh as you can see it looks just like the pumpkin got the same uh, 53 ford body on it but yeah so i'm going to uh start by i'm gonna well, get these put back up on my shelves but uh i'm gonna start by uh, going through this uh, what he got for me was a Dumbo RC uh, radio setup, a Hobby Wing 1060, one of these DS servo, uh, 20 kilogram servos, the Tamiya style servo saber, and uh, he even included this, which is really cool and hard to find. I don't know if you can see that, but it says QD. These are the QD wheel wrenches, and they uh they came with the qd trucks and uh i've got several qd trucks now and don't have that wheel wrench i wish that was mine but uh maybe i can make that part of my deal but anyway um so yeah i'm like let's get the bench cleaned off and uh we'll start tearing this into this one all right so i uh, got the body off and we're gonna have to disassemble the front end but i'm gonna do that last uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is we got to take this top off of here because these have just a printed circuit board on them and uh, I need to get that off of there and uh, get the circuit board out of there. All right, so as you can see, we've got our five wires for our five wire servo and uh, basically the printed circuit board that uh, powers everything. Now on this, I'm going to try to maintain the double A's and uh, be able to use them. So I've got the two motor wires here, which I will cut. Um, and then uh, there is, I'll cut these wires, get them out of there. There's your switch wires here, and then uh, there's going to be two wires that uh, go from the switch right there down to the batteries. And so that we're going to wire the uh, 
hobby wing battery plug to and uh, yeah it should work pretty well so uh, running double A's on this uh, using the rechargeable double A's they're 1.2 instead of 1.5 volts so it'll end up being uh, around 8.4 volts like running a uh, seven cell nickel metal pack so it should work pretty well now when I cut these I like to leave a little nub on there um, so you know where each of the wires went that way if you were to ever want to return it to the stock uh, form you could um, but yeah so there's the crystal and you can actually replace the crystals on these there's a spot in the battery compartment to be able to uh, do that um, there's the chip and we actually use these same chips on uh, uh, the delay boxes that I build uh, some of them so that's kind of neat and uh, yeah so this is the stock electronics stock speed control stock uh, uh, steering and such and uh, yeah it's uh, not a bad system if you can get them to work he said he couldn't get them to work so uh, one thing I am gonna try before I go much farther is I'm gonna strip the ends of the battery wires or the uh, motor wires and just make sure that uh, the motor works and that that was not part of the problem. All right, running it off of a single double A. As you can see, it's spinning the uh, tires there. So uh, that means it works and that's good news. All right, so to take the front end on these apart, obviously you gotta take the uh, front wheels off and uh, this has nylon bushings in it for the front wheels to spin on and uh, you know we all prefer to have bearings but this is such a low speed truck even on high that it doesn't matter but I do have a pile of new uh, bushings so when I put this thing back together for them I'm gonna put brand new bushings in them and I'm gonna put some anti-wear to my grease on them just to uh, make them uh, spin a little faster a little better but what we got to do here is we got to take this front bumper assembly off um, and then the screws that hold this bottom piece on we should be able to pull the uh, servo out and uh, then um, when it comes to putting this one in, we've got to, the only thing we've got to really do is cut the ears off of it. So uh, that makes that kind of easy. One thing I wanted to show before I get this uh, any farther apart is, so I got the front bumper off of it and it just kind of sits over this and the, I can't really do it right now because of the way it's sitting. Uh, I'll have to pick it up, but the front end pivots in there, and that's your suspension. So it pivots inside of there, and then your uh, springs on your shocks are what make it go up and down. So interesting setup, but uh, the Radio Shack ones are the exact same way also. And so now you can see this uh, five-wire servo it's a little bit different than a normal servo as to where normal servos have a basically a flat top on them and this one they're l-shaped and the radio shack ones made by tayo are the same way i'm pretty sure these qd trucks were made by tayo uh for tamaya just made to tamaya spec so they're a little bit better than the uh originals but uh anyway cannot use this servo saver because the end on the servo is different so um got to pull that out of there and uh then uh, i'll be able to reuse the rods and use the new servo saver uh with a uh, uh with everything that you see here but like i say you got to cut the ears off of the servo in order to get it to slide in so i will show you that when the time comes Okay, so I just learned something new doing this. So all the other ones that I've converted, whether it was my Midnight Pumpkins or the uh, Radio Shack ones, they had like 
this kind of had a squared off end on the servo. This actually has a 25 spline uh, servo saver. And so we should be able to use that for the new servo. Um, if not, then we'll just use that part because the rest of the servo saver is the same. So that actually makes this a breeze. And Mike, I'll just take that off of what you're gonna give me for doing this. And uh, uh, I'll keep the, the servo saver for another project, I guess. But uh, yeah, did not know that, learned something new. So that's the, that's the joys of doing these. They, uh, the ones that I've dealt with are from the 80s and uh, uh, really early 90s. And this one is from 93 and was the last of the monster trucks to my knowledge. So anyway. All right. So there we go. There's our stepped servo and uh, with no legs on it. Other than that, it's basically the same identical size as a regular servo. So like I say, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the legs off and I'll put the wire up through the hole and uh, yeah, we will go from there. I'm gonna have to uh, hook this up to something before I uh, do that to center the servo. Okay, so I haven't centered the servo yet, but uh, I did get it shoved up in there. The wire's going through the hole and comes out underneath of here. And that will run up into the chassis so we can hook it up to the uh, one to turn, two to burn uh, on the uh, ESC or on the uh, receiver. But uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward as to uh, how these work. So um, they're, they're pretty easy conversion. In fact, all of the, uh, the quick drive ones that I've dealt with are an easy conversion, as are any of the... Uh, Oh, like the Radio Shack Golden Arrow uh, buggy, which is essentially a Nico F10. Uh, the Red Arrow buggy, um, they all use uh, the same stepped five wire servo. So you just cut the legs off and uh, they work really well. Some of them you got to use a low profile servo on, but like this, it doesn't matter. So anyway, um, I'm going to get hook this up to a radio and get it uh, straightened out. I've got my TTO2 sitting here next to me, so I might as well just hook it up to that, get the uh, get the thing going straight, and then uh, I will put this front end together and uh, we'll call that an episode. All right, got it hooked up to the TTO2, which uh, we're gonna be doing some more speed runs with this, but... Uh, Servo works, so I've got it centered, and I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, servo saver put back on there, and uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. Okay, so it is different. Um, the servo saver itself is the same, but the uh, splines on this are like the sand wall, so they're a finer spline. So I'm going to pull S4 off of the tree here and uh, put that on there. should be the same as a Futaba. And then we'll be golden. All right. We've got steering left and steering right. So now I can disconnect it from the TTO2, get the cover put back on, get the front end put back together. And like I say, that's what we're going to call it an episode. So I'll bring you right back for a conclusion. One thing I totally forgot, you've got to trim this section out because otherwise the uh, it hits where the uh, hits on the servo. That's where that L shape would have sat like that. So not a big deal, but uh, something I completely freaking forgot about. And so just another step we got to do. All right, guys. So we got the uh, front end all back together. Got the servo up in there. And as you can see, we cut it out. Uh, it's weird that you got to cut out that much, but you really do in order to get it to work. And uh, so, yeah, the servo's back in place where it should be. And front end's all together. Got the wires sticking out. They're plenty long to hook to the receiver wherever we may put it and uh, yeah so anyway that's what we're calling an episode for today 
and thanks for watching guys this is going to be a really fun project so stay tuned on this one uh there's going to be more to come and we're going to do this modified versus stock qd blackfoot challenge so that'll be fun and uh maybe even get out uh, one of the radio shack trucks to uh, drive with them to compare so anyway don't forget to hit that like and subscribe we'll see you soon thanks for watching